Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Godzilla on This Day podcast. My apologies for skipping yesterday. I was just too busy throughout the entire day to do one at the very end. Uh, But today, now that it's a bit of a more relaxed day, I'm able to go back to this. So today, looking on the history, seeing what occurred uh, on, on this particular day, lo and behold, we have a very famous director who was born. Wes Craven. You've heard him. I've heard of him. Definitely an influential director when it comes to the world of horror films and suspense and thriller films. Unfortunately, he passed away just a few years back, but his legacy still continues to this very day. So I thought I would share this on this particular podcast so that way I can give my own thoughts on him and then some of the movies that I've seen of him as well. So Wes Craven is someone who um, went from being like let's say short small uh, string budget type films to then being uh, larger films especially ones that help create franchises afterward. Of course his most famous franchise is none other than a nightmare on elm street although i was privy to some pretty interesting information about the franchise when i went to the uh, famous monsters convention there in dallas a couple months back one of the actors that was there was the guy who was in the second freddy krueger movie the nightmare on elm street 2 and on that one he explained that and i did not know this that this movie it was made only because Wes Craven was not interested in doing a sequel at the time. Uh, his first movie clearly was a big success. The first Freddy Krueger film launched the careers of himself and then also of, of Robert England. And then I believe Johnny Depp had a small role in there too. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically a, a career turner when it comes to that film. But interestingly enough, he was not interested in going forward with a sequel so someone else got their hands on it and then the actor that was in it he uh when i was at his panel he gave a whole bunch of back behind the scenes type uh information including the notion that uh this movie the second one actually was the one that was even more popular made more money and it still has the highest dollar amount made throughout the entire Freddy Krueger franchise uh, to this very day. And the way it's considered that it's the film that that built New Line Cinema. It's not the first Freddy Krueger movie, but the second one. So he stated that because of this success, that's when Wes Craven decided to come back into the third film and then became somewhat of a uh, 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 behind the scenes, either producer or director for some of the rest of the films too. But I did not know that. I thought he was always in it from the very beginning to the very end. But no, in this case, he was uh, somewhat of a uh, stickler when it came to the sequel. Now, as far as another franchise that he's famous for, of course, is Scream. I've never seen any of the Scream movies, only because it, they don't really draw my attention too much. The idea of someone dressed like a Um, uh, like a bad Halloween costume and then with a a pretty cheesy looking mask it didn't really draw my attention but it definitely interested a bunch of other people out there and so there were three films made and I think there was a more recent reboot or Scream 4 something along those lines um, that, that that was also made too and I believe that there's even a TV series someone Please uh, let me know if that's incorrect on that part, but it's because I don't pay too much attention to the world of Scream. But he started it, and then it still continues to this very day to be another very important franchise. But if there's one film that definitely holds a place in my heart when it comes to Wes Craven, it has to do with People Under the Stairs. Have you heard of that film? Some of you that are fans of Wes Craven know what I'm talking about. Some of you are probably scratching your head wondering what in the world I'm talking about. But it's a film that remains a cult classic to this very day. Never saw the film in theaters. Um, It was way, way, way too young before my time to see it there. But I was able to catch it afterward on TV. And there was just something so catchy about that movie, about the notion of a regular suburban home that looks perfectly fine from the outside, but then when you peek inside, take away those layers, then you'll see some sick, morbid stuff, like you see a family, dysfunctional family, I think there were brothers and sisters that just are just crazy as can be. You have someone like an adopted daughter that is caught up within the entire melee, then you have uh, the main character, Fool, if I remember his name, uh, he was the one that was basically also caught up in this chaos while he was trying to 
save his own family. Um, it was just so many directions that this movie went, but it worked. I don't know how it worked, but it did. Like it, to this day, I can watch it and rewatch it, and then I will always see something new, something that stands out. Maybe it's the fact too that so much in the movie takes place within that house. The house itself is another character. So many floors. It seems like there's an endless number of floors, endless number of rooms too. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy that something like this, just a regular two-story house, could have so much uh, of, of scenes within them, each one within different locales. Probably my favorite one is the basement. I don't know uh, what it was in there, but it was just this creepy-looking basement where they had Whatever those things were, I don't know if they were zombies or reanimated stuff, whatever was the case, they were down there just trapped. And so that that's where a lot of people, unfortunate people, ended up going uh, if they came, um, let's say, to the to the bad side of that wicked brother and sister. But yes, uh, there was just that was just a whole other element to it. And I've heard that there was going to be an attempt, something to try to either redo it as in theaters or something like another movie, maybe a sequel, reboot, whatever is the case. But once Wes Craven passed away, it didn't seem like there was too much uh, further push for this. But yes, that one definitely um, holds a, a place dear to my heart because also when I was growing up and I was a young boy and I saw this film, uh, that the, the girl, the adopted girl, uh, I totally fell in love with her back then because she was someone that was just just almost like Alice like it was like Alice in Wonderland type stuff with her being involved in all of this mayhem and they just happen to just cannot root for her like you can't stop yourself from rooting for her and hoping that she makes it out of there but yes absolutely beautiful acting beautiful scenery beautiful cinematography uh, the locales whatever was shot in there it, it remains a testament to its cult-like status but that's pretty much it uh, those are my thoughts at least in the world of Wes Craven I'm making a habit now to try to catch up on the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films to try to see them one by one. I've seen the second one now and I'm working my way towards the third one, uh, but eventually I'll see all of them. The one that, that actually the first one that I saw ever, probably a bad one to start is the uh, Freddy vs. Jason. But yes, I just happened to see it because that one was the more recent one. Uh, last film appearance, if you could believe it, of Freddy Krueger. He hasn't made any appearance yet in any other type of film. But yes, uh, I mean, as, as other than the obvious reboot, but in terms of the original actor, Robert England, that's his last appearance. But that's the one that started it for me. So that was probably a bad point to do so. But still, I'm going to make it a point to try to catch all the other films. But yes, on this day, 1939 to be specific, Wes Craven was born died a little bit uh, sooner than expected uh, just a couple years back or the other year or so but at least to this day he still remains a very landmark figure in the world of Hollywood so what do you guys think what are your thoughts on Wes Craven are y'all a fan of his or do you think he's overrated please post those comments below that'd be really good to hear some all right everybody thanks again as always take care